Okay, and welcome back students who are taking math for business and finance and math applications. And we're still working on the chapter nine uh, payroll theory. Um, with this video, we're going to now move into the federal withholding tax and the different ways that it's calculated. So this one's going to be probably uh, a couple of videos long um, because it is a lot more complicated. Um, in the last video, we had talked about the admin aspect of it. So let me kind of slide down to the correct slide here. Ah, we had uh, discussed the uh, W-4 form and right here, let me get my pen. Um, right here, we had uh, talked about uh, assigning how many allowances and right here as to whether we're singled, married or um, married but withholding at a single rate. Okay. Um, remember when the uh, you're going to fill this out as an employee and the person who's doing a payroll will use these different amounts, these different uh, choices in order to be able to calculate how much a federal withholding tax will be uh, taken from your paycheck. Okay. So um, there basically there's two methods. Um, and again, these are all covered. Let me slide up here underneath a circular E. Okay, I had mentioned that the circular E um, is, is sent to the employers that tells them how to do the calculations uh, for payroll. You'll find both methods, the uh, bracket method and the uh, percentage method in that circular E. In the, using the bracket method, all of the tables that you need um, will be in that circular E. Uh, to be uh, the, the way, okay, I'm going to get a little, I have to talk about two different things simultaneously, so um, let me just maybe back up just a little bit here. Um, the bracket method is basically a table, and you um, depending upon how many deductions you have and whether you're you know, single or married, the payroll person will then just go to the table and see how, what amount it is that you need to have deducted. Okay. Um, with the percentage method, there's actually a, a calculation, a formula that they use in order to determine how much should be withheld. Okay. Computers and computer systems are set up on the percentage method. Right. So if you're in a very, very small business um, and there's not that many employees, the person doing the books will probably use the bracket method unless, of course, they have the, the software on their computer. But if they're doing books by hand, they're most often going to do the, the bracket method. Um, it's just you know easier and more time efficient to do that. But when you have... Uh, a lot of uh, employees and you're using a computer system, obviously that makes it much, much more efficient uh, to be using the percentage method. Now realize that regardless of whichever method you, you use, I mean, I can have, I could be uh, married and have two withholding amounts. And if I look at the bracket method, I, I'm going to get a different figure from, that's different from the percentage method, okay? So there's no right or wrong to it. It's just an amount. And that's why at the end of the year, we file our taxes. Filing our taxes is, a, is like a, a reconciliation that says, oh, this is how much you should have paid in. And granted, they're withholding more than uh, we should have paid in and because Uncle Sam wants that money and can use that money. And then they're more than happy to give you that back based upon what you should have actually paid in. So even though you can use the bracket method and the percentage method and come up with a different amount, it doesn't necessarily mean one is more right or wrong than the other. It just gets reconciled at the end of the year. Okay, so um, I'll talk about the bracket method right now. And then um, depending upon how much time has been involved, I'll move over to the percentage method, maybe in the next video, we'll see. All right, but I'll use also this example that we had previously um, with the W-4 here, um, having the you know the person being married 
and having two deductions. And of course, also remember that there could be an additional amount withheld. And like, for example, if you know that um, you're going to be doing contracting work and you know, you're going to be paid, but you're not going to have any taxes taken out of that contracting amount. You, you don't want to go through the hassle of, you know, owing at the end of the year. You might have, say, an additional $25 taken out every paycheck, all right, in order to make sure you're covering your liability there. So that's what the additional amount is. But for the most part, we're going to be working here um, either with the single or the married and the two deductions here. Okay, so when I come over here to the bracket method, and these tables are in your uh, your textbook and in your business math handbook, um, what you're looking at right now on this slide is you're looking at the single amount right here. Okay, it says single, and this is weekly. All right. The next slide here, I have married and weekly. Okay, now. There's a lot more. Uh, there's a lot more tables. Um, these are only partial tables. Okay. Uh, you're going to have basically two sets. You're going to have a set for single, and you're going to have a set for married. But then it, it depends upon the payroll period. Okay. This one is weekly, meaning every you get paid every week. There's a set of for both single and married for biweekly. There's a set of tables for monthly. There's a set of tables for quarterly. There's a set of tables for semi-annually and even a set of tables for annually. Okay. So you're going to have basically two sets of tables, one for single and one for married. And you're going to choose whichever payroll period, in other words, how often you get paid, that's the table that you're going to select. Okay. Now I happen to have here, and again, this is only a partial, um, single and weekly and married and weekly. Okay. And you'll also notice that going down the side here, I mean, it's start this particular page of the charts begins with $600. Okay. Come on, pen. My pen doesn't seem to be cooperating here too much. And I'm down at the bottom here at like $870. Okay. Well, there's act the table actually begins at zero dollars, okay? And you know when it got to the bottom of the pages, it was at six hundred dollars, and this is like the top of the next page, and this will go down to say maybe twelve hundred dollars, okay? Because there's more. Uh, like I said, this is only a partial of that page. Um, I made it so that you can see this information, and of course on the next page it would start at twelve hundred and go on and on and on, okay? for further amounts. Now, the way you're going to use this table is where um, it's the payroll period is weekly and the person is single. Okay. And here to here are the number of allowances. So from our W-2, um, on there, it had said two allowances. So if I'm looking at this two allowances, that means I'm going to be looking at this particular column of figures. Okay. And what we need to do is we need to determine how much that person's gross pay is. So it says here, and the wages are at least, but less than. Okay. So if you notice here, it says if the wages, if the person's wages are at least $600, but less than 610, all right, we're going to use this particular row, okay? But now notice that there's 610 on the next line also here, okay? Because remember, it's at least, right? Here it's saying, but less than 610. So if that means it should be $609.99, right? Because it's but less than 610. Well, less than 610 is 609.99. Okay. If I'm looking down here at 750, that means that $749.99, right? Because it's but less than. And on the next line, you see the 750 because it's at least. So 750 is at least. All right. So I, I hope you you can see that uh, that difference there um, as to how to decide whatever column you're in. 
um, if I'm just going to pick a number, uh, $717, let's say. Okay. Well, what I'm going to do is, if I know my gross wages are $717, I'm going to come down to this at least. So, at, you know, when I'm looking at the at least, so it's at least 710 it can't be 720 because 720 is greater. Okay, so I'm going to look at the 710 column here because it's at least 717, right? 710, 717 falls between 710 and 720. So that means that particular row, right, is the row I'm going to use. And I come across until I get to the two uh, allowance. Uh, the tool allowance column and that means I'm going to withhold $71 as my federal withholding tax okay so you can see how this is not an, an exact um, method here it's just uh, to give round numbers uh, because why $711 is very different from 719 if you're if you're basing it upon a percentage then you're going to talk about being pennies off and those pennies over the course of the year, you know, uh, you know, obviously gives you a variance. Okay, so that's why we do the reconciliation at the end of the year, because you're using a, you know, two different methods, and this particular method is not, you know, exact. I mean, it's round enough and it's close enough for government work. Okay, so let me explain this again, and so that you see how this works. Okay, all right, so. What you're going to do is, whenever you're looking at a W-4, you're going to uh, see whether it's um, the person is single or if they're married, okay? And you're going to look at the pay period, whether it's weekly, bi-weekly, or whatever have you, okay? In this case here, we're talking about single weekly, right? Then you're going to look and say, okay, well, how many allowances does the person have? And in our case, it was two allowances, so we're going to look in this column here because it's two allowances. Now. When it comes to how much the person is being paid, right? Let's say, and I used 717 last last time. Let's use $850. No, $800, right? Let's say they're a salaried employee. Okay, so their wages are $800 as a salary, right? I come over here, and it has to be at least 800, right? Well, there it is, right there, 800. Okay, if it, I can't use the previous one, which is 790 to 800, because it but less than 800. That means that's 799.99. So that's the incorrect column. The person is being paid 800, so I'm using the column that's at least 800. Okay. The row, I'm sorry, at least 800. So when I come across this row, and I come over here to the two withholding allowance, right? It's telling me that I have to withhold $84. Okay. Now, let's use the same thinking, but over here on the married one, and you'll see what I mean here. We're going to be in the two columns. Remember, we're being paid 800. So I'm going to come down to at least 800 okay and when I look at the two columns over here the two allowances over here you can see that there's only $59 being withheld okay this is for married on the single one we're we're talking about withholding $84 married 59 okay so you can see that it, you know, there's more than one factor uh, being involved here. You have to remember that with married and having two allowances, basically, if I'm the head of the household, now I have three people to be taken care of, okay? Um, but if I'm single and I have two allowances, I only have two people to be taken care of, and that's why there's a difference between the two, okay? And all of these tables are adjusted accordingly. Now, if you watched my other videos, and um, this is the last thing I'm going to say about this, and we'll move on to the next video in the percentage method when it comes to the number of allowances you know always choose the most correct all right I mean if you only have two allowances because you have two children you know select the two allowances I mean you can select less if you want you can select one and you can select zero all right 
which means you're going to have more money taken out of your paycheck. I mean, look at this first line at $600, right? For two allowances, it's only $54. One allowance, it's 65 and zero allowance is 76 and What that means is, you know, if you wanted to select zero allowances, that's fine. They're going to take more money out of your paycheck, which means you're going to have less money to be able to spend, you know, on your uh, for your children, your two allowances. Right? And that's your choice. But it is illegal for you to go and say, well, I don't want to have any money taken out, so I'm going to choose eight. Okay, so that there's no money taken out. All right. Um, the government sees that they're going to slap you with interest and penalties. Okay. And it adds up very, very quickly. Uh, you don't want to be doing that. Um, really, if you only have two allowances, take two allowances. Don't take three. Okay. If you want to have, um, you know, you, you're, you're always, you, if you want to have less money taken out, I mean, it is possible to have three taken out as your allowances so that you have a little bit less taken but if you start running into the four allowances when you should only have two you're definitely going to be start getting whacked with interest and penalties because um, they do set a limit as to how many you rightfully can have okay so with that said um, i'm going to stop here and then i'll move on to the percentage method in the next video